Hey, what's going on guys? Kalamazi here, and this is going to be my 9.0 Shadowlands pre-patch Demonology Warlock DPS guide. In it, we're going to be covering the new rotations, talents, class changes, Azerite configurations, essences, and not really corruption because thankfully that's going away in pre-patch. Any weak auras, profiles, or add-ons you see here are available to you guys for free on my Twitch. If you want to swing by, drop a follow, hang out, ask any questions anytime. Feel free to do so. So, with that being said, let's get right into this Demonology Warlock Guide. So when it comes to Demonology, my favorite spec in Shadowlands pre-patch, once again, all three, all Warlock specs have access to Curse of Tongues, Weakness, and Exhaustion. Demonic Circle has gone baseline, replaced by Howl of Terror here. And we also have the new talent, I guess returning ability, not talent ability, Fail Domination. Your next pet, pet summon is Instant Cast and has its cast time reduced by 5.5 seconds. Essentially making it instant, it's like 0.5 seconds. It also does not cost a Soul Shard. That's not on the tooltip here. It was a recent change on beta, but you can see Fail Dom, Wrath Guard. No shard cost. Hasn't really been updated yet, but it is what it is. So getting into the actual baseline demonology toolkit, you'll notice here, all these spells, they're the spells we've had for all the BFA. Not a whole lot has changed as far as our core rotation goes. We still have some of the Monk Tyrant, Call Dread Stalkers, Hand, Demon Bolt. Shadow Bolt is, I don't know, Shadow Bolt is, there it is. It, they move abilities around in random places with this, I don't know. We still have Shadow Bolt. Everything's pretty much the same there. However, there have been a handful of talent changes that have sort of changed the way Demonology plays and feels, I think, for the better. Quick mention here, the three abilities here called Dreadstalkers, it basically makes your Dreadstalkers jump into battle faster and reduces their cast time by 0.5 seconds. You learn this leveling in Shadowlands, uh, increased damage of uh, Fell Firebolt, uh, I guess essentially like less energy spent to so one extra Firebolt cast, however you word it, potato, potato. 56. So you won't have access to either of these. And the final one here, summoning your Demonic Tyrant instantly generates five Soul Shards. So Baleful Invocation, the Azerite trait, has gone baseline for Warlocks in Shadowlands. However, this is a pre-patch guide. We still have Baleful Invocation, the Azerite trait. So we're not missing the five shards. We're good to go. Don't worry about it. Moving on to the actual raw talents here. I guess that oversight is what's changed. So for the most part, nothing's really changed in this row. I'll be real with you. I think there might have been a minor buff to Dreadlash's damage, but this is pretty much the same thing. Bombers being your two-shard spe uh, consuming spell on a half a minute cooldown, which gives you a placed ground effect versus, well, you know, Demonic Strength being essentially twice as long, not having a cooldown, or not having a shard cost, and following the mob's tank whenever he kites eventually out of your Bioswitch Bombers, because let's be real, they always do. 25 row demonic calling power siphon and doom doom has had the summon doom guard clause removed it doesn't matter because it didn't work anyways it has quite literally been bugged since i believe legion early legion it doesn't summon a doom guard it was bugged tested it a lot on beta ptr never worked they just took it out so <laughs> demonic calling so there's been a change to demonic calling as well and this has been the number one thing that's messed me up going back and forth from beta to live or ptr to live Demonic Calling has been buffed to make your Call Dreadstalkers cost two less Soul Shards. They're instant casts. In BFA up to pre-patch, it made them cost one less Soul Shard, so you still have to have that one shard around. Like, there's been so many times where, oh, I can cast my dogs. Oh, wait, no, I can't, because this is, uh, you know, this is still pre, uh, pre, pre-patch. So, big change there. Power Siphon also has been changed. It still sacks two imps, uh, two charges of Demonic Core, but they've increased the Demon Bolt damage to those two charges and just those two charges specifically by 30%. Being real, the demonic calling change is pretty big and uh, it, it feels really good. It, it helps smooth out the overall gameplay of the spec a lot more. I like it. It's a good step in the uh, right direction. 35 row here from the shadows. They've changed the wording on this to now say dread bite causes the target to take 20% additional shadow flame damage. So essentially it, it used to be like whenever your Dreadstalkers charge into battle, similar to Dreadlash, there's a conduit in Shadowlands that get, gives this build a lot of extra value, but obviously conduits, pre-patch, they're not around. So there was a change to this, nothing really relevant as far as like pre-patch goes overall. Soul Strike, I believe Soul Strike's the damage modifier was buffed slightly in early, early alpha. It's still the same thing though. 10 second cooldown gives you a Soul Shard. An ability you can cast in the move, however, it's tied to your fellow guard, so. Summon Vile Fiend. Same thing. Same pet. 45 second cooldown. One shard. 
Uh, once again, Hell of Terror has replaced the Minor Circle. It's gone baseline. Dark Fury has had its... Uh, Dark Fury increases Shadow Fury's radius by two yards. Mostly irrelevant. If you're talenting into this, it's pretty much because you want the reduced CD on Shadow Fury for whatever reason. Mortal Coil, however, is a 20% heal for you on a 45 second cooldown. And it heals you regardless of if the target is incapped or feared or whatever or not. It's a very, very strong... Well, I don't see ability in this row. And the fact that it doesn't compete with Demonic Circle anymore in raiding, PvE, whatever, makes it a pretty strong choice. 45 row, Soul Conduit, Inner Demons, Grim War, Felguard. They did buff the actual damage modifier on the demon to summon from Inner Demons. Not the imps, but when you have a chance to summon a demon. They buffed their, I think, attack power by a bit. Like 20, 21%, I think, something like that. I could be wrong there. But the big thing here is that Grimoire Felguard is still a two-minute cooldown, which is a bit unfortunate because your Tyrant is a minute and a half cooldown. However, Grimoire has gained a lot of value in pre-patch heading into Shadowlands for one reason. Demonic Consumption has been changed. Your Demonic Commander, your Demon Commander, now drains 15% of the life from your Demon Servants to empower himself. So it's no longer based around just however many imps you have out. You know, previous Tyrant setup, in BFA before pre-patch has been, I don't care about my dogs. I don't care about anything else. We weren't really playing Grimoire. We weren't really playing Vilefiend. I don't care about anything else. All I want to do is get as many imps out as possible and LOS as many imps as possible to get the biggest overall tyrant out. And what I say, what I mean by LOSing imps is that your demonic tyrant's damage with demonic consumption was based off the raw energy remaining of all the imps that he consumed when he summoned him, when he sucked them all up. So that's what made... LOSing imps so important for warlocks. You could essentially have a boss, like, let's say this is a boss right here. You could have him right here. You can see the boss. I can see him, you know, like, I LOS, I can see him. But my imps would spawn next to me, and they can't see him. So they'd spawn, and they'd walk over the wall, and walk all the way into melee, and then start attacking him. That's what the imp LOS thing was... I guess is, was, was, I suppose at this point, if you're watching this, in BFA. That's where you saw those Demonology Warlocks bursting to 700k DPS. You thought a Fire Mage could burst. Yeah, give a Demonology Warlock a thousand Tyrant and Lust. No one touches him. So, Demonic Consumption was changed to now consume 15% of your, all of your pet's health. Number one, that means it no longer consumes your Imps. It just extends them because your Tyrant baseline extends all your pets. Where's my Tyrant at here? Um, it extends all your pets. In the first place, let me pull tooltip for you guys. So, your imps aren't being consumed. So, that's a DPS increase. As long as like it translates, it translates over properly. You know, with the health consumption and all that. This means also that Grimoire Felguard and Summon Vile Fiend have gained a lot of value. A tremendous amount of value. My baseline pet has 16, basically 17k health right now. My Vile Fiend has the same. My Grimoire Felguard... I guess I have to have a target, but he has about the same. And our imps have like, I think a tenth of that value. So your larger pets, your Vile Fiend, your Grimoire Felguard, your Baseline Felguard, they give a lot more health towards Demonic Consumption, which has greatly increased the value of these two talents tremendously in single target and AoE pretty much across the board. This version of Demonic Consumption is one I like a lot more. It makes you want to think about setting up your tyrant every time. Okay, I cast my Dreadstalkers now. I get my Grimoire on CD, my Vilefiend on CD. How many imps can I squeeze in last second before you know, my dog expire? All right, pop my tyrant. They're all extended and his damage is increased by a lot. This is very similar to the Thalkiel's consumption ability, which we had in Legion, the Demonology Artifact. It's sort of a throwback to that. I think this is a fixed, better version of consumption. It makes just summoning and controlling and managing pet duration a lot more impactful and better for demonology heading into pre-patch. Sack Souls has not been changed. They did indeed buff the actual attack power of the demons to come out of Nether Portal, just like Inner Demons. It was the same buff the same day. I think by like 18%, 20%, something like that. It might have been like a just an attack power modifier buff. But the unfortunate part with Portal is that it still has that weird every time you spend Soul Charge thing and it doesn't... It doesn't summon demons based on how many shards you put into your cast. It's just that weird shadowbolt hand, shadowbolt hand, that odd sequencing that really nobody wants to do. In the end, even if they fix that though, it would still be a tuning thing because whether whether you have to go shadowbolt hand, shadowbolt hand, or follow a normal rotation, if it's undertuned, it's undertuned. And currently, it is undertuned. Regardless of tuning though, let's get into a couple talent builds here and talk about rating and mythic plus for demonology warlocks.
So when it comes to talents for Demonology in Shadowlands pre-patch, starting off with Mythic Plus, this more or less is the build that I would look to run. So in the first row here, we have Dreadlash, Bombers, or Demonic Strength. We're still playing Demonic Strength like we were, uh, I guess, before pre-patch be began. The thing here, and we'll get to this a bit when we're talking about Essences, is that up until about a few days ago, Vision of Perfection Minor was giving you a 10% major cooldown reduction to your Tyrant, your Infernal, your Dark Lair, whatever you were looking at running as a Warlock in pre-patch. This was reverted in a hotfix, I believe, a couple days ago, but it wasn't documented, so we're not sure if we're going to have the 25 second cooldown reduction or if we're going to have the 10%. If we have 25, it gives you essentially a minute Tyrant, which sinks your demonic strength really well with it. That's the play, I feel, at least in my opinion. Outside of that, Bioscored Bombers is a solid alternative. It is a 30 second cooldown versus a minute. It costs two soul shards, and it's more or less a ground placed effect like Rain of Fire. So if your tank is kiting, he can kite outside the bombers, but hey, you know, demonic strength will chase the pack around, so there's a bit of extra value there. 25 row Demonic Calling, Power Side from Doom. You play Calling in plus. Uh, the change here, once again, Dreadstalkers cost two less Soul Shards, thus making them free whenever this procs. This is different from pre-patch pre where it costs one less shard. So there's that. A lot of mobility and plus. More shards, more imps, more hand of ghoul then cast, more implosions. Just a very strong choice across the board. 35 row here. Now, for a while, we've played Soul Strike in Mythic Plus. However, with the changes to Demonic Consumption, I feel that Summon Vile Fiend is the play. Now, Soul Strike does give you an extra shard, it does deal a little bit of damage, and it's on a pretty short cooldown. It's a bit of extra mobility. I wouldn't necessarily fault you for going with Soul Strike here if you didn't want to manage the Summon Vile Fiend cooldown, being a 45 second CD and things like that. The thing is, your Vile Fiend has a lot of health, and it counts a decent bit towards your Tyrant with Demonic Consumption, so I feel through testing both of these over the course of beta, PTR, that Vile Fiend is the play here, even in a Mythic Plus based scenario. 45 row, Soul Conduit, Inner Demons, Grimoire, Felguard. We were playing Soul Conduit previously as well with the old version of Demonic Consumption, but to the same extent of Summon Vile Fiend, Grimoire, Felguard, I feel, is the play. Now, it's a two minute cooldown that costs a shard, but this pet also has a lot of health on it, and extending your Felguard another X seconds on top of its baseline 17 second cooldown is really strong. It brings a lot of AOE damage, a lot of health to summon, or to, I guess, funnel into your Tyrant, and it's just a really strong option in the first place. Now, if VOP Miner stays a 25 second cooldown percent, I'm sorry, cooldown reduction, you will indeed essentially have your Grim War Felguard for every other Tyrant, as long as you're Tyranting on CD, because Tyrant, I think, is around like a minute five ish right now with VOP Miner. If it stays 25%, Okay, a minute five, 210, basically every fellow guard, you're good to go. Final row here, Sack Souls, Demonic Consumption, Nether Portal. It's not really close. You play Decon. It gives you an incredible damage CD on a minute to minute and a half cooldown, depending what happens. Sack Souls is just not very strong right now, and Nether Portal requires you to plant for 20-ish seconds, and honestly, it's just not very good. Consumption's where you want to be. It, it really flows much better, I feel, with the spec, encapsulating your Dreadstalkers, your Imps, your Vile Fiend, your Felguards, into one major cooldown, also extending them instead of consuming all your imps, it just really brings the spec together as a whole, I feel, and gives you an even better damage profile in Mythic Plus. Now, as far as single target talents go for Demonology in pre-patch, I'm going to be real with you, you pretty much play the exact same thing that you're playing from Mythic Plus. It's still based around Demonic Consumption with Grimoire Felguard, Vile Fiend, Demonic Strength, Demonic Calling. It's just a really good build. Demonology's profile is built for single target or stacked cleave based damage with Hand of Gul'dan, Demonic Strength, Implosion, all just the passive AoE damage that it brings, Felstorm, all that as a part of its toolkit. Consumption gives you that strong one minute CD for priority damage, similar to how like an Aflock is maybe with focused like Fixate damage, UA haunt, all of that, but it's not a minute cooldown. And at the same time, your Felguard extension, even though it fell storms and is a big AOE CD, this is also really strong. Like I mentioned, with consumption, and also it's just strong single target in the first place. Being able to extend it that long on top of its baseline 17 second duration is really strong. Vile Fiend being a 45 second cooldown means you can basically hit it on CD, depending if you're playing VOP minor or not. If you're not, it's going to be worth holding it. But this build is pretty much, in my opinion, unless things change, the same build you're going to want to play in plus and rating. Demonology is just pretty linear, I guess, when it comes to talents, but I don't think it's a bad thing with this build. It's also very synergistic.
When it comes to Essences in Shadowlands pre-patch for Demonology Warlock, there are, in my opinion, two real major Essences that you can run. The first being World Vein Major, which gives you a strong intellect-based one-minute cooldown that pairs with your Tyrant normally. Now, with this major build, typically you look to play the likes of VOP Miner, Lucid Dreams Miner, and Breath of the Dying Miner. If you don't have one of those two Miners or three Miners, focusing Iris is not a bad option, but VOP is a pretty key one here. If VOP keeps its 25 second cooldown reduction and not the 10%, like they said, over the course of, you know, like PTR and pre-patch, this will give you your one minute tyrant build, essentially the same thing we have on live right now. It was recently changed back from 10% to 25, I believe three or four days ago on PTR as an undocumented change of sorts. So we're not sure what's going on there. But if it goes back to 25%, which well, if it stays that way, I guess at this point, it will give you your one minute tyrant build, which lines up very well with World Vein Major usage, sinks your demonic strength, and essentially sinks your Grimoire Felguard, spoilers ahead, with every other tyrant. It's a very strong cooldown window. The second major essence you might want to look at playing is VOP Major. Now, with the changes to Demonic Consumption this time around, VOP Major does indeed benefit from Demonic Consumption. The Tyrants you proc do indeed siphon 10% of your active pet's health, and it also extends them all by 4 seconds. Previously being it would consume them, then it was broken in like 8.2. It works the way you think it works. It does everything that a normal Tyrant does just for, you know, 30-ish percent of the value. It's also a strong option. It has gained more value, I think, comparatively to previous patches with the new rework to Demonic Consumption. If you're playing VOP Major, you look at playing normally Lucid Dreams Miner, Breath of the Dying Miner, and Conflict and Strife or Iris Miner. Now, if you don't have Conflict, Iris is fine to swap in. It just sort of depends, but keep in mind that Haste and other secondary stats are being devalued in pre-patch, so you're already typically, you know, probably playing three explosive potential traits, or at least looking at it, so Iris probably loses a good bit of value there, as far as a Miner Essence is concerned. When it comes to actual Azurite gear in pre-patch, for the most part, you're still going to want to look at gathering as many Baleful Invocation pieces as you possibly can. Yes, you don't gain anything shard-wise past the first stack of Baleful Invocation, but it still buffs Demonic Consumption, it buffs your Tyrant's Demon Fire damage, and that's still a big portion of our damage in pre-patch, even with the, the rework to Demonic Consumption. Explosive Potential is still a very strong trait. Yes, Haste does become devalued in, in pre-patch with the secondary stats here effect that they put in. However, that much haste, that passive buff that EP brings is still really, really strong, and in my opinion, it's still going to be highly sought after in pre-patch, both for Mythic Plus and single target fights. The haste is just super strong, and you can technically, if you've been keeping up with sockets and your gear and things, just re-socket to other secondary stats to sort of compensate for that, you know, stat distribution loss percentage-wise. Demonic Meteor, Supreme Commander, and Heart of Darkness are also okay traits for Demonology. In Mythic Plus, Hand of Gul'dan, Splash Damage does make up a decent portion of your damage, so I think Demonic Meteor as a one of, most likely in place of a Baleful Invocation trait, is a solid play there. It does also bring a chance to refund a Shard, which gives you a higher ceiling in a sense, setting up Tyrants for more Hand of Gul'dans or more Imps, so there is a bit of value there. Supreme Commander, the intellect buff that it brings, the core charge, it's solid. It gains more value with VOP Major, because VOP Major gives you a Tyrant, which means once that little baby Tyrant expires, you're going to get a Supreme Commander proc for essentially a third of the intellect value, similar to what VOP does for Tyrants. It's a strong interaction, and it saw a lot of play in 8.2 in Eternal Palace, trying to get like those super big lottery rolls with VOP Major and Supreme Commander. Heart of Darkness was changed in, in pre-patch as well to no longer require corruption, but they reduced the amount of secondary stats you get from Heart of Darkness. I think it was reduced a bit more proportionally as well from, you know, taking scaling and things into account from 8.3 Nilotha to pre-patch, because, let's be real, you don't really have to work for it. It's just a passive amount of secondary stats. But for the most part, I feel that Demonology Warlock doesn't really change a whole lot as far as Azerite Gear is concerned. What's good now, I feel will still be good in pre-patch.
Okay, so when it comes to pre-patch, one big thing that's changed for Demonology is how fast your imps spawn out of your Hand of Gul'dan cast. Watch me cast this Hand of Gul'dan and watch how fast my imps spawn on this weak aura. You can see them visually spawn here as well. Hand of Gul'dan, one, two, three, they're already out. You can implode for EP. They spawn incredibly fast, which is a huge quality of life improvement for the spec. And also, honestly, puts you in a pretty good spot when it comes to your opener. You're not having to delay with Shadow Bolt cast or Soul Strikes, whatever. You can just go for the most part. Hand of Gul'dan, wait like a third of a second, maybe less, just, just go, implode. They spawn super fast for EP. So as far as my, my single target opener has gone, I've been following this. Pretty much for pre-casting a Demon Bolt like normal. Nothing only really changes there. Casting Hand of Gul'dan, filling with a Shadow Bolt. Wait for imps to spawn. They spawned, implode. I'm going to ignore this proc here because it won't always happen. Then we go to five shards, Grimoire, Felguard, Vile Fiend, Dogs, build the five. We got the proc there. And then go Hand, Shadow Bolt, Hand, World Bane, Trinket, into Tyrant, and we can go Zerking there. Hit Demonic Strength, EP fails, so you put your hand out, implode, bam, there you go. And technically you can implode a little early there, because Tyrant no longer consumes imps when he spawns. He actually extends them. He just siphons their health. And from this point, it's pretty much just the Builder Spender rotation. You've got EP falling, so we'll implode about now. And then you just pretty much cast Hand of Ghoul and three shards, dogs that they're off CD, and go from there. Now, if Vision of Perfection Minor ends up staying a 25% cooldown reduction on your major CD and not 10, like it was mentioned before, you're going to have pretty much a minute, a minute, eight second tyrant, which means, in my opinion, you're going to want to hold your Vile Fiend for it. If it doesn't, and it ends up being like a minute 20, you probably just want to pop it on CD, but it's where it depends on what happens with that. Refresh EP here, and if it is a minute tyrant again, you're pretty much going to have your Grimoire Felguard sinking pretty well with every other Tyrant being the first one, the third one, the fifth one, as long as you're popping your Tyrant on cooldown. So let's take a look at how our CDs would look and how our rotation would look if we were going into our third Tyrant, say, with Grimoire Felguard coming back around. Okay, so let's say rotationally you do indeed have your Minute Tyrant still in Shadowlands. You basically have your Dog procs coming in now. We'll have EP up. So we'll build to 5-ish shards. Dog procs should be coming in about now. There they are. We just go Grimoire, Vile Fiend. I'd bolt here to 5 and just go Bolt, Hand, Hand, Bolt. And we go one more Hand into this Dog proc. And then World Bane, Trinket, Tyrant. And you're pretty much good to go. All the imps you cast are extended there. You sort of have to react to procs. If you get a call Dreadstalker's proc, okay, you can use it and work into your rotation. If you get an extra Demon Bolt proc, we had three there instead of two, okay, you can work that into your rotation. But it's more important with the changes to demonic consumption, you want to extend your dogs, both your Grimoires, your Vile Fiend. Their health matters now. Their, their, their actual life, well, I guess more their, their health pool, but their actual lifespan matters because, you know, like, you want them all active when you're casting your Tyrant. Imps are extended now, other pets were extended before, but their health matters because of the consumption changes. It's siphoning health from all of them and making a bigger tyrant. And outside of that, it's really just reacting to what happens, you know? Uh, casting your Vile Fiend if you're not waiting for your, your tyrant, and, and just going from there. It's pretty much a Builder Spender kind of spec. Hey, if this is coming off cooldown, is it Grimoire Felicard or Vile Fiend? Okay, check. If it's one of those two, do I have Tyrant coming off CD? Is it worth holding? If not, put it on cooldown. But like I said, if VOP Miner ends up staying at 25 second cooldown reduction, it's, in my opinion, going to be worth holding, as long as you've synced them up pretty well. Now, if you're looking to play VOP Major as Demonology, the opener doesn't really change. The cool thing with VOP Major, and we'll see if we can get some procs here, I'll follow the same opener we did with the World Bane build, we're just not popping World Bane, is that if you get a Tyrant to proc, watch the pets that I have around me, their health is siphoned by the VOP Tyrant. We're going to go Grimoire... Vile Fiend Dogs here. I'll use this Bolt proc as whatever. Hand, we'll Bolt, we'll Hand, we'll go Trinket, Zerking into a Tyrant, Demonic Strength, and we go from there. This is my player bound Tyrant, but watch, see if we get any procs here. I'll implode for EP as well. See if we get any procs here. It'll extend your imps. Th there you go, there's one. See how it siphoned health? And look at the, the energy. It, it's frozen. It's frozen. Uh, I mean, that now also I have my player bound Tyrant out, but. He siphoned health there. So Demonic Consumption does indeed work with the BOP-based Tyrants. They hit harder. It's RNG, but you get more extensions on your pets. Like, we procced again. So we, it, look, we procced again. And this is my Totem Tracker week four. It extended my Grimoire Felguard again. The initial Grimoire Felguard is still active for, what, 40-ish seconds? The, amount, the imp army I have out now is massive. Besides that, you still just maintain your normal Builder Spender, you know, depending on VOP, Major, Minor, whatever you want to do. Um, depending on if it lines up, you might want to buy off the CD, you might want to hold for your Tyrant, but the VOP build is more RNG. 
it's we played this build a lot like eternal palace and things but it was with consumption being different it would consume your imps which they ended up not making work anyways it was just it was just a nightmare this build does indeed freeze imp energy and it siphons health from all your pets just like normal demonic consumption does which adds some value to this plus i mean you're having you have your dogs out your grim war felgar your bile fiend if you get the right procs at the right time those view they make more of a difference, a bigger difference in the VAP procs of war when all you were doing was trying to extend with imps. Get 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 max imps out in LOS energy. Extending your heavy hitters makes a difference. Now VOP only extends by four seconds and not you know the same amount as your actual tyrant here does with 15, but it's still something. And hey, if you're looking for an RNG build, the VOP version, the VOP major version, I should say, of demonology. If you're looking to ro uh, roll the dice here, it very well could be your build as well in pre-patch. So when it comes to Demonology, AoE, and Mythic Plus and things, not a whole lot really changes when it comes to your cooldowns. You're playing Grimoire Felgard, you're playing Vile Fiend again. So we'll follow the normal opener here, but the big thing as far as Demonology goes, and this has been the case for all of BFA for the most part too, we'll pop our CDs here. But outside of that, it's really just been your implosion rotation. So we'll set up our normal opener, we'll go Grimoire, we'll go Vile Fiend, we'll go Dogs here. We'll build the five and get a few imps out and then go into our tyrant. So we'll do that. Shadow Bolt, Hand, Worldbane, Trinket, Berserking, into your tyrant and pop your demonic strength. At this point, your imps are already extended. I'm going to implode. I'm going to implode here for EP. And at this point, we're going to have dog procs coming in in a, about seven seconds here because of the extension. So we're going to sort of fill a bit. But normally, depending on if your EP is up or not, you'll have a lot of imps active. So you're going to have one big implosion right around when your Worldbane expires. And here we go. Here come the dog procs. There's two right there. So for the most part, what you want to do with EP and your just general implosion rotation, if you have two procs of demonic core, you'll build the five shards, go hand, bolt, hand, bolt, hand. And then at that point, you can implode. If you have two or more stacks of demonic core, your rotation is building the five when it comes to AoE. And obviously, you catch your dog and things on CD too. But you build the five, hand, bolt, hand bolt hand and then implode now previously after the final hand you had to cast like a shadow bolt or some kind of spell for those imps to finally spawn but like i said look at how fast imps spawn now they spawn really really quickly so it's nowhere near the weight you had before now if you don't have any demon bolt procs or you're looking to fail with your normal aoe rotation you can pretty much let's just dump some shards here you pretty much just want to go build the five shards let's dump this proc let's go hand Shadow Bolt, Hand, and then for the most part, you can just implode there too. So there's really two ways to follow. There's two ways to go with the implosion rotation. One is two hand of ghoul dance into an implosion for six imp explosion, I guess. And the other is three hand of ghoul dance using two demonic core procs for nine total imps imploded. But outside of that, and plus, you just maintain your normal CDs, Vile Fiend, Grimoire, your Tyrant, Demonic Strength with your Tyrant, and Demonology single target slash stacked cleave based damage profile should do most of the work for you thanks for watching dudes i hope this video gave you all a better understanding of just how demonology warlock is looking heading into shadowlands pre-patch and 9.0 now there is still a bit of time before shadowlands actually launches and with there being a pushed back release date some changes could still be coming down the line so if they do i'll be sure to update you guys here once again, any weak URS profiles or add-ons you saw here are indeed available to you guys for free on my Twitch. If you want to swing by, hang out, drop a follow, ask any questions anytime, feel free to do so. Let me know what you guys think of this version of Demonology in the comment section below as well. And by this version, I mean the pretty similar version to what we've seen in BFA with a few, I guess, subtle changes. There's not as many unique interactions with like Azerite traits and talents or new abilities as there is say Destro or Affliction in pre-patch, but for the most part I still think Demonology is in a good spot and I'm a huge fan of the demonic consumption change, sort of going back to a I guess pseudo Thal Chaos consumption. Once again, if you guys want to see more content, be sure to hit the subscribe button below, hit that like button while you're down there as well. Thanks again dudes and I'll catch you guys all again soon on stream. Peace.